The table below contains data from a study on vitamin C intake in children and the common cold. Find the probability that a randomly selected child from the study developed a cold during the study, given that they were taking a placebo. All right, so let's look at keywords for this problem. It says find the probability, so we know we're doing a probability problem, that a randomly selected child, so just one child, from the study developed a cold during the study, given that they were taking a placebo. So it's a probability question. We're selecting just one subject, and we have the phrase given that. Those three things put together tell us that this is probably conditional probability. So conditional probability has the formula probability of, and then we put the first thing, so probability that a, a child from the study developed a cold, so probability of a cold, given that, so given that is represented by the straight up and down bar, that they were taking a placebo, so placebo. All right, so probability of getting a cold, given that they're taking the placebo. All right, now once we have that written out, the next step is going to be to express this as the following fraction. Probability of cold and placebo divided by just the probability of the second one, probability of the placebo. Okay, so if you were using the, the formal formula, this is how you would set up the problem. And then you would find this category, which is the intersection of the two categories, cold and placebo. You put them together into an intersection on the top, and then for the bottom, you put the second one at the bottom always. And since it's a probability, it would technically be a fraction on top and a fraction on the bottom, so a complex fraction. So we're going to do it this way, and then I'm going to show you a shorter way to handle this problem. But let's do it this way first, cold and placebo. So if you want to look at that, you're going to say, you know, Children develop colds, children free of colds. Develop colds is the same as a child having a cold. And then it says N placebo. That's the intersection with the placebo group. The placebo group is here. Children developing colds is here. They intersect here, right? These two categories intersect here. So the answer is 35. 35 children in a study are part of the placebo group and the children who developed cold group. That's the intersection. Okay, so at that point we'd say 35 over the grand total of 103. This is the probability that a subject is in the cold and placebo group, right? Now, if we do just the probability that a subject is in the placebo group, it'd be the number of children in the placebo group. So placebo group, 46, number of total children in that category, right? Divided by the grand total of 103. And then, you know, um, if you remember this from your earlier classes in arithmetic when you were younger, you would know that a complex fraction like this if the denominator is the same, you can just cancel that out. That's from the principle that um, you know, you're basically flipping and multiplying by the bottom fraction, and then the 103s would cancel. So either way, you're going to end up with the result 35 over 46 as your solution. So the final answer for this problem is going to be 35 over 46. OK, so that's great. That's fine. That's one way to do it. That's a proper way to do it using the formula. However, I want to look at another approach that is faster, in my opinion, when you have a table. And this approach we talked about on the concept video. The approach when you have a table is to use um, this given that condition to your advantage. So it says, find the probability that a randomly selected child from the study develops a cold given that they were taking a placebo. So what we want to do is focus our attention only on what follows this phrase given that. That's it. Only look at that category. For us, that category is the placebo group. So I'm going to circle that category. Those numbers are the only numbers we need to use to solve the problem. If you take any number outside of this list here, you're probably not doing the problem right, because you actually only need these numbers, not all of them even, just two of these numbers, to finish the problem. And that's because we're only looking at the group that took the placebo, right? Given that they were taking a placebo, so we're only interested in the placebo group, and they're asking, you know, find the probability that a child from the study developed a cold. So what they're saying is among the placebo group, what number of them developed a cold. So you would say the number who developed cold is 35 over the total 46. So the shortcut approach is pretty simple. What you want to do when you're using the shortcut method is to say, look, I focus on whatever follows the phrase given that. In this case, it's taking a placebo. Identify that column or row, depending on which one it is. In this case, it's a column. So identify that and only look at these numbers. The next thing you do is you take the total of those 
numbers that you circled, or the total of the column in this case, and you make that the denominator of your fraction. So this is why you end up with, on the bottom, the 46. Then from there, of the remaining two numbers that you haven't yet used, you're gonna look at those and you're gonna ask yourself which of those two numbers corresponds to what they're asking for. Now they're asking us for the uh, selected child to develop a cold, right? So of these two uh, numbers here, which one corresponds to the ones that develop colds? Well, children free of colds or children developing colds? Well, obviously it would be this one, and that's 35 then for the top of the fraction. And that's it. That's all you have to do to solve the problem using the shortcut method. So in my opinion, uh, the shortcut method is really, really much faster when you're dealing with table, table, sorry, data that's laid out in a table. All right, finally, to finish the problem, we're just going to do the division here. So we'll say 35 divided by 46, and when we work that out, we end up with 76.1. So essentially that's 0.761, or 76.1%.